Our most holy Father, our God, our King, we love you so much and we're so thankful that you're here with us today. We thank you for the beautiful weather we have outside and we thank you for technology so that others can be with us that aren't in the room. And we ask that you'll please uh, instruct the Holy Spirit within each one of us to teach us what we need to learn today and that everything that is set up here, even if it has come out kind of funny, they'll all understand what is being said. So Father, you are our God, you are our King. Jesus came and he saved us all from ourselves. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, since most of you were at the conference, um, it'll be a review for some of you. I was asked to talk about the conference today. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. <clears throat> when we uh, went to the conference, there, you know, the conferences are all very similar. They're an educational situation where they're trying to help us to understand a little bit better how to do the job of preaching Jesus to the world. And that's kind of what we, what we were learned. This time, what we were dealing with was, um, it was called Renewal, Building on the Foundation of Jesus. That was the overall title of the conference. And that was the kind of stuff that they were um, <clears throat> uh, kind of working with. As we all know, when you're born into this world, you come into it with a carnal nature. <clears throat> and that nature is, as a baby, you cry when you want something. You cry when you don't feel well. You cry when you are lonely. You cry when anything you want isn't there. You do, after a little while, start to giggle and laugh when... Um, you start to be able to do that. But the point is that totally, completely carnal mind, all that child can think about is getting what he needs, getting his diaper changed. He's hungry. He's lonely. He's afraid or whatever it happens to be. And he does everything he can to get us, the parent, to take care of his needs. It drives some parents nuts because sometimes there's the, the, you can't, give the child what he wants. And he just cries and cries and cries. He's sick and you can't stop the pain. You can't make him get better. All you can do is comfort him. And that's the way it is with a carnal mind. As we grow older, we begin to see there are differences in the world. But again, our mind is carnal. God says the human mind is desperately wicked. You know, wickedness is that part of us to where we'll do whatever we want to get what we need. Sometimes wickedness becomes uh, a joy in making other people miserable. Doing things for, to make you feel good that makes other people feel bad. That's all part of the wicked heart that is within every human being. But God, in his infinite wisdom, knew that we would never be happy that way. And so he set up a plan to bring us into happiness to bring us to himself, to make us part of him. And that's the, what the renewal is about. Going from a carnal, selfish individual to a loving, spiritual, godlike individual. And that's a lifelong endeavor. In Jesus' renewing ministry, he started in us. He works from the inside out by the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Now, I stole that directly out of one of the sermons that they gave that day. And it's interesting that God comes into us at conversion, and he starts to show us things. Okay, you do this because of that. You are this way. I'm not that way. Really, you're not finding any joy in the way you are. You're not really happy. I am totally happy, Jesus says. I do everything the Father asks me to do, and it brings me great joy. And as our lives go, we move. And every day is a renewal of that. We pray. We go to church. We study the scriptures. We do good deeds. But there's an overriding thing that's in there, and that is a lot of the good deeds all come from God. Scripture tells us that. But we do them for selfish reasons. It makes me feel good, or I did something really bad, so I've got to do a bunch of good deeds to make myself feel good. 
And our renewal is moving from that kind of doing good deeds to a doing good deeds for the sake of good deeds. Love. I love these people and I'm going to do good for them. I do it because it's the right thing to do and I want to. And that's where we're headed in our lives of renewal. Now there's a whole lot of things that go along with our renewal, but uh, I'll just read his words. What God in Christ is, has done for us is working out in us by the Spirit. As we respond to the Spirit, we participate in God's renewal. You all know how the Holy Spirit works. You'll have an idea of something you're gonna, you want to do, and the Holy Spirit might whisper to you, you know, that might not be a wise thing. And, you'll, you know, and then you'll have a few ideas of why that might not be such a wise thing. However, if you want to do that, if you change it a little bit and do it this way, it will work out good. Holy Spirit is quiet, and he whispers to us in our senses. It's like James at work. God has given him favor in his employer's eyes. I hope you understand that. And then when he goes to make decisions and whatnot, he needs to remember, okay, I represent Jesus here. I know that doing it that way will get results. But if I do it this way, it won't only get results, it'll help my people grow. It'll develop friendship amongst us, a team, association. And his, the Holy Spirit will show him which way to go as he works through it. And that's part of our renewal, learning how to do things in a way that bring honor and glory to our Lord. Not honor and glory to ourselves, even though that is a byproduct. But our desire is to honor Jesus, thereby honoring our Father. Just like the song said. Good selection of songs, by the way. Fit right in. Um, so one of the first things, remember, is a hearing of the word of God, read and proclaim and studied. So one of the ways that God brings us to himself is through his word, the Bible. And we all, I hope we all take time to read scripture on a regular basis, study it. You know, a lot of people when they study scripture have an archeological frame point. They love to know about this city and about that person and about what was this looked like? How was this done? So when they study scripture, they got all these Wycliffe's Bible encyclopedias and all this stuff, all these programs and they're digging in there finding all this stuff. And interesting things happen with people like that. They realize that when this was written, it was written to a certain person, a certain type of person. They, in this city, this was an agricultural city. So if Jesus said something to them, it's going to be taken from the agricultural point of view. And if we can understand that, we go, oh, so that's what Jesus was talking about. If you don't know that, then what you have is misconceptions, thinking Jesus said something that he really didn't say. And so it's important for us to understand the context and what we read. So part of your Bible study can be going through all that. Okay, who was this guy? Oh, did you know that this guy was a physician that Jesus is talking about here or in the Old Testament? So he's going to be thinking things from that point of view. Oh, this guy was an architect. This guy was a builder. This guy was a farmer. This guy was a, a, a bum, whatever it might be. And it really helps us to understand what's being said in Scripture to get what's really being said. And that helps in our renewal because we go, oh, cool. If this is true, then over here, what I thought cannot be true. And then you can study, and we get renewed in our understanding of Christ, of Scripture. And we become more like Jesus all the time. And that's what renewal is, becoming more and more like Jesus. Now, just so you know, in this particular conference, there was another side of renewal. That was church renewal. How to run your churches in a renewal attitude, because things change. Like, we're a small group. We could become a fellowship if we wanted to. It's a different form of group. You sit in a circle, and you don't really have a pastor. Everybody sits there, and we have a topic, and we all talk about it. 
But our, pro our thing is we have this big building to take care of and everything, so we can't really quite go into that fully. But I mean, this, that's the kind of stuff they were talking about. So the, this conference wasn't just about our renewal. It was also about church renewal. I took a class uh, just as a sidelight uh, from um, Lorenzo. And uh, it was about the uh, running a church. To run a church, you have to have people. How do you get people in your church? Well, it's done through gatherers. There are people in this world that run around gathering people. They just do. They meet people, they talk to people, they invite people, and then those people come to church. And he says some of the best pastors in the world are gatherers. But the weakness with gathering pastors is they're always gathering rather than pastoring. So they end up being church starting pastors. They start churches. And once they get a church started, they find someone to run it, and off they go. The apostles were that way. They would go into a town. They'd gather a whole bunch of people. They would start a church. They'd make an elder, a pastor, and they'd be off to the next town. They were all gatherers. But that's the kind of stuff that we talked about in, in, this, um, in all the seminars and whatnot. So it wasn't just about our personal renewal. However, for me, that was the most important part was the personal renewal. Okay, the next thing we talk about is that uh, you have to respond with repentance and faith to Jesus. One of the things we talked about, and it's something that they told us that we should start, did we start our little prayer of repentance yet? We have, okay. They talked about that as a Christian, we need to be in a constant state of repentance. And what they, I believe they were talking about was we need to be watching our lives, watching what we do, what we did, looking for the results of the things we did. And we find, when we find something that didn't quite go the way we hoped or that wasn't something that was bringing glory and honor to Jesus, that we repent of that. And in that repentance, we're not just telling God we're sorry. We're looking for ways to see if we can change something so that it doesn't happen again. And so what they asked us to do is have just a 60 second time of silence when we all bow our heads and tell God, thank you for forgiving us and talk about maybe some of the things that went wrong that you wanted to repent of. To keep that in the forefront of our minds so that we understand that we're not perfect. We are human and we make mistakes. And those mistakes are opportunities for us to learn and to grow and to become more like Jesus, renewal. Constantly being renewed, constantly working to become more like Jesus. And then they go through a whole bunch of stuff in here and they talk about uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18. And all of us with unveiled faces seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror are being transformed in the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Constantly being transformed. You are. All of you are. You have the Holy Spirit or the Most High God in you. He's there always, and you can call on him anytime you want. Listen to what he has to say. When you're making a decision, say, Holy Spirit, what do I do? Which is the best way to go? I've got ten ways I can go. Which one will work the best? And I guarantee you he will help you find the right one. And you know how you'll know? It will feel right. You'll just know this is the way to go. And once you start down that course, it might be rocky. You might go, oh, I don't know. This is kind of not getting the way I thought it was going to go. But in the end, it will be wonderful. And a great deal of good will come to you and those around you. The third thing that uh, they that this particular speaker gave us was, our response will involve a refusal to conform to the society around us when there is a conflict. This is a huge one. This is one that our teenagers grapple with terribly. They live in a world where anything goes. Joe in his sermon talked about um, how human beings will do anything to get what they want. And you know, like the gay movement where they said it's genetic. Well, it's not. That was a lie to make it so that people would say it's okay. And then they've, now they've gone back to, it's a choice, you can do whatever you want. 
Okay? That was the human beings forcing their will. We want this, so we're going to make it this. Now, you know, homosexuality is a choice. Uh, being a Christian is a choice. Being married is a choice. Our whole life is full of choices. Renewal helps us to make choices that bring glory and honor to Jesus. That's what our renewal does. And it's a daily, ongoing process which will continue until God gives us our spirit bodies. And for all I know, it will continue after that too. I just don't know how it works after that. But for now, we're in a daily, one-on-one, -on -one, with Jesus, renewal. Now, Jesus is the author of it. Jesus is the source of it. Jesus is the power of it. Jesus is the driver of it. Jesus' foundation is everything. If it wasn't for what Jesus did for us, none of us would be here today. We wouldn't. Jesus loves us so much that he gave his life for us. He risked everything. Now, does he want us to go out and die on a cross? Most of us won't do that. Some of us might get martyred. We might. You know, I was been watching the news, and there's a scripture in the old in the in the Revelation that says the king of the south will push at the king of the north. Another way to read that is the kingdoms of the south will push at the kingdoms of the north. Well, the kingdoms of the south are pushing at the kingdoms of the north. And if you listen to the rhetoric, the kingdoms of the north are getting ready to go down there and kick the fire out of them. They're getting tired of the bombings. They're getting tired of the problems that the extremists make. And they don't hate Muslims. They hate the extremists. Those who think violence is a means to the end. And unless something happens quickly, there's going to be a big shooting match going on in the Middle East. So we need to watch that. We need to keep our eyes on it so we're not surprised if this is that particular scripture being fulfilled. Because, you know, the book of Revelation is a book of what was, what is, and what is to come. There's lots of stuff in that book that's uh, big pictures. Not exactly how it's going to happen, but these kind of things are going to happen. This is the way it will be before the Lord returns and takes us. So we need to be watching for all that. And in our renewal, we need not to be afraid. In Christ, there is no fear. And we need to learn that. With Ed, one of the biggest prayers we, we say with him is that he won't be afraid and he won't be anxious. And we say that prayer every single time we pray. Why is that? That's because Ed understands who he is. He knows that he's a son of the Most High God and he should not be afraid. He should not be anxious as he is. That should not be there. And so, guess what? It's not there as much. I mean, he still asks for that. He's still concerned. And there's nothing wrong with concern. We've got to have concern. Concern is good. With concern, you go, okay, this could happen. What do I do about it? Okay. Anxiety is... Yeah. When you get that kind of anxiety, you just panic and freeze. You can't do anything. And everything just goes to pot. So what we do with, what I've done with Ed, and you can all pray for this, is that when he starts feeling anxious, he can drive that out with praise. Look at all the times that you've been horribly anxious and God has saved you. There is not one time that he has not saved you. Not once. Just look at all those times and I guarantee you, your anxiety will drop to concern. That's all part of Ed's renewal. He's growing. He says, why do I have all these trials? Ed, you don't have any real trials. You don't have any trials. You got this little problem, that little problem, all annoying little problems. You are totally, completely taken care of. You have no problems. You're 93, almost 94 years old. You're lucky. I know 94-year-olds that can do nothing for themselves. And it's all a matter of perspective. And our renewal is a perspective. 
When we're born, everything centers on us and earth. Me, 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 me. I got to have this. I got to have that. I know some people, we watched a movie the other day about some guys. They were extreme athletes, and they're riding across the top of these hills, and they're jumping over all this stuff, doing all these things. And I was thinking to myself as they were doing all this stuff, flying, you know, you get those things where you jump and you fly and this stuff, climbing cliffs, jumping off cliffs, all kinds of things. I'm looking at that going, you know, that is totally and completely human. Adrenaline junkies, whatever they were. Of course, these guys were trying to prove something, but still, that's human. That's human nature. That's living for the life of the human. On the other side, as we are renewed, we start to live for the life of the spirit. The human life doesn't matter so much anymore. The human experiences aren't what's important. We don't live to jump off cliffs. We don't live to ride motorcycles through the bushes. We don't live to eat fantastic meals. We don't live to do all these physical things. And something happens. This guy is afraid to die because he's living the human life. This person in the renewal, death no longer has any meaning because you understand that I am an eternal being now. I have the Holy Spirit of the Most High God in me. That makes me eternal. Not totally eternal because we don't have, we, we have a beginning. God doesn't, but we do. But you know, you live with God forever. And even when your body dies, your spirit lives on, whether it be at sleep in a grave or it's up there with God looking down going, you can do it, you can do it, or whatever. We don't know. God doesn't really tell us what happens after death, except that we're with him. And that's what we have to remember. When I was younger, I was afraid to die. I was scared to death of death. I, would do, I wouldn't do anything that I thought might get me killed. Kind of like the fear of going to jail. I have a great fear of going to jail. I do not want to go to jail for any reason, which shows me why my martyrdom will probably be in jail if I become a martyr. <laughs> Isn't that fun? But that just seems to be the way it is. But now, I'm not afraid of death. Not like I go out and ride my motorcycle on cliffs and stuff, because I don't have one. Or I don't avoid things because I might get killed. But I'm not afraid of death because I know there is no death for me. I will go to sleep and I will wake up in the kingdom with God there and Jesus. Whether that be immediate, which I hope it is, or whether that be a certain amount of time when Jesus himself returns. It doesn't matter. Which allows us to do things that other people won't do. I can walk into somebody's home who's dying of some horrible disease that if I catch it, I will die and help them without fear. Because if I catch it and die, so what? It doesn't matter. It's just the body that's dying. What makes me, me, never dies. It can't die. Renewal brings us to that. And we keep going and we keep going. And eventually it comes to the point where we look at this world from Jesus' eyes. He wasn't afraid of death. But to show us that he was human, he prayed those prayers. His human side, he was human. 100% human and 100% God. And the God side was so much stronger than the human side that he never sinned. And as we renew, we get closer and closer and closer to Jesus' perfection. The older we get, the less we sin, but we still sin. Because sin is a transgression of the law. And the law is love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. And because our human heart is desperately wicked, there are times when we fail that. But they become fewer and fewer and fewer. And God's good with it. Because the Father sees you as you are, resurrected, perfect. He doesn't see your sins. He doesn't look at you as though you're a horrible sinner. He lets Jesus deal with that in the Holy Spirit. 
He looks at you as his perfect child. The way my mother used to look at us when we were kids, we could do no wrong. You literally had to show her the film and have us admit it 50 times before she would ever believe it. You want to have some fun? Just talk to Nancy about the way my mother was. That's hard on a child. You know that? It's really hard on your children if you let them believe that you can see no wrong in them. It is really hard on children. You get some really bad attitudes and stuff. I can do anything I want. My mom won't believe it. So, but God's not like that. He knows. But his love for us is so powerful, so strong, so deep. He has planned to have us with him for eternity that our Father chooses to see us as we're going to be. And we are all totally and completely forgetting. Like Joe said up there, there are no works we can do to have God's love. That is a free gift that every human being on earth has, whether they've accepted Jesus or not. God loves them with all their hearts, all of his heart, mind, and soul. He loves them so much that he will allow them to kill themselves if they want to to not accept Jesus, to be evil, to do rotten stuff. So this renewal thing that we had at the headquarters was kind of kind of refreshing. Rather than do, learn to do this, go do this, go do that, um, do all what we call our Great Commission, going in all the world and preaching Jesus, which is a big chunk of the true Great Commission, which is love the Lord thy God with all heart, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the true commission. If we're doing that, we will be doing this. It will come naturally. When people see a loving, concerned, giving heart in a world full of people who don't care about anybody but themselves, they notice. And eventually they're going to say, why? And that's your moment to where God has opened that heart and you can speak to it. You are the instrument God is going to use to get to that heart. But the Father opened that heart. See, that's another thing that I really realized from this conference, is that when you're out there living the life, preaching Jesus to people and whatnot, it doesn't matter if a person doesn't accept what you say. Because the only ones that are going to are those that God has opened their heart. God calls him first. The Father himself personally goes, hey, I'm going to offer you eternity now, not later. And that heart opens to him. He goes, okay. And then he brings one of us to talk to him. It's like Paul said, I watered, he planted. He planted, he watered. But Jesus, the Father, they did the work. We're just the instrument. And we should have no fear talking to anybody about Jesus for any reason. That's part of our renewal. As our hearts open, as we truly believe, as we understand, we're able to do these things. And there's no fear. So always remember that there are things out there designed to destroy us, to destroy our renewal. That is Satan himself. He's always looking for your bad stuff. But guess what? God's got his number. As soon as he gets you to do something bad, the Holy Spirit pipes up and says, hey, did we learn something today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, what you going to do to keep it from happening again? Well, I'm not going to go to the porn shop, I think. That's probably a good place not to go. <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, I'm not going to... Cut, that, cut a person off again. I'm just going to miss the exit next time rather than cut the guy off and get, cause all this grief. All right? You know, then you've renewed a little bit. Being renewed, renewed to Christ's way of thinking. And then there's our own personalities, our own human spirit, our own wicked heart. It pipes up once in a while and gets us in trouble. But you know, the older you get, the more you concentrate on God and his word, on Jesus and his life, on what he's done for you and who you are and what you are, your human heart tends to soften. You tend to understand a little bit more how it works. 
you tend to start seeing that it's there, that there's a wickedness in you. And you, you go, oh, yeah, here I go again. I remember this. Holy Spirit, I'm in trouble. You've got to help me. What do I do? Run, son, run. And off you go. <laughs> Flee from your wickedness. Don't stay there. You know, working for Lowe's, they hire a lot of very beautiful young women in that store. And some of those very young women don't have any morals. They'll track down any guy they're, they're uh, attracted to. So you have to be aware of that. Of course, that's sexual harassment, and you can file a lawsuit. But the best thing to do is be watching for it, and the first sign simply say, no, we're not going there. If you bring it up again, I will file a lawsuit. And most of the time, that takes care of it. However, there are men that do the same thing. But that's all part of being renewed day after day after day, seeing that, understanding that that stuff is there, that Satan is out there, that your human nature is there. You know, as guys, yeah, it's kind of nice when a young woman looks at you more than once. As a woman, it's nice when a guy looks at you more than once. But you can't let it go any further than that. You got to nip it in the bud right now. And a renewed person, a person who is in tune with Jesus and Jesus' ways will see that. Why? because they will have asked their Holy Spirit to make sure they see that. See, because that's your Holy Spirit. God has given that Holy Spirit to you to use. It's through that Holy Spirit that we're going to heal whole hospitals, that we're going to move mountains, that God is going to give us the ability to uh, give sight to the blind. That time is coming. I'm not sure when, and I may not live to see it, but it is coming. And it is already here. There are some churches that are doing great healings. And that's the Holy Spirit. It's not them. And it is coming. So our renewal is something we need to, is a word and a term that we put on something that means a whole lot. It's one of those big church speak words. So if you're giving a sermon to a group that doesn't, and you say, yep, and renewal, blah, 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 they're going to look at you like you're nuts. What is renewal? So if you guys get a chance to speak to other churches, be sure if you use renewal, you tell them what it is first so that they'll understand what you're talking about. And that's another thing. The church speak is dangerous speak, especially when you're dealing with people who aren't in your church. It's, you know, it's like the theologians. They'll have a word this long that covers 50 volumes. And they'll say that word. Other theologians know exactly what they're saying. But everybody else is going, huh? And so you got to be real careful that you know your audience. And as you grow, your Holy Spirit will help you. Okay, this particular group of people, actually, I, I perceive that they understand a little bit about Scripture. They understand something. So I can start here. Another group, these guys don't even know who Jesus is. So you start at the beginning and work your way. And a renewed mind is a mind that has the Holy Spirit in full control of himself when you get totally renewed. Because our spirit and the Holy Spirit combine. And we work and we struggle to be as perfect as we can. Okay? We do. We try. We do our best. And when we fall down, Jesus picks us up, he wipes off the dust, we learn some things, and we're a little bit more renewed. Because renewal is going from human, carnal, selfish, to Jesus. Total and complete love. That's what we're being renewed to, and it's a daily, daily, daily operation. Some days are better than others. We all know that. Someday horrible things happen and you instantly revert back to your selfishness. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get mad because I got cut off again. Even though I know it's the same guy that does it every day. Because all you know is one of these days there's going to be an accident and you're going to be looking that guy in the face and that will be his beginning of renewal. Especially if every time he cuts you off you just wave and let him go. Now, if you've been cussing and swearing at him and flipping him off, that might not go so well. 
So remember, renewal is God taking us from death to life. And that life comes through Jesus himself. He gives us life. He came to earth. He lived. He died. Got resurrected. And through that, we get to live forever because our penalty has been paid. And the penalty of sin is death. Whatever form that takes. So as we go about our activities, let's consider and have renewal be one of those words that you can say, oh, my renewal got damaged today. I really wasn't paying attention. I kind of took a step back. But now I'm going to take a leap forward. Because every step back with God creates a leap forward. Because God allows things to happen to us that teach, that grow, that change. He can take any horrible thing that Satan wants to throw at you, and in the end, you'll grow. Or somebody around you will grow. There's always a silver lining to every trial. It's there. You just have to look for it. It's a blessing that God gives to all of us. Our conversion was a wonderful, wonderful gift. You know, not everybody accepts Jesus. God shows Jesus to a lot of people, but some just won't take it. And if you've started on this adventure, realize what a powerful and potent adventure it is. You thought your adrenaline rushes were good with speeding down the road or whatever. I mean, when you start to be renewed to the point to where you look at the world the way Jesus looks at the world, your adrenaline rushes get to be pretty big. When you realize who you are, you are a child of the Most High God, the creator of all things, the guy that has this huge sign that says, the buck stops here. I am the beginning and the end. I created all things. He's the greatest philanthropist in the whole world. He just gives life to everybody. We are children of him. And he gives us all power and all authority to do his will. Any one of you at any time can literally move a mountain for the work of God if you need to. And don't think you can't. Because you can. And the time is coming when we will. Because God is fixing to bring his kingdom into this world in fruition. Right now it's in us. We live in his kingdom. Our lives are in his kingdom. And that is so wonderful to understand because I don't have to fear anything. And if I physically die, so what? It'll be bad for Nancy if I were to physically die. But as far as being the end, it is not. It's really the beginning. It's a promotion. Go from all the physical foolishness to no pain, no suffering, getting to talk to God forever, Adam, Noah, all the rest. There's going to be a lot of people to talk to. So as we go about our lives, remember that you are in renewal. God does not expect you to be perfect. He does not expect you not to ever sin. Don't allow that to get you down. Use it as a tool. Move to the renewal side. Which renewal side could be that way too. I don't know. I just picked that way. <laughs> so, um, okay, I'm going to quit now. Just remember you who you are. Are there any questions, comments, anything anybody wants to say?